Lisa, Sarah wants to know what kind of organisms you all are hoping to see. From microbes to protozoa to big anemone. Kinoderms and sea anemones and all the different polychaetes that live in these. So we're just interested in the adaptations that animals have to living in these really extreme conditions. For back home, many people are wondering what the different colors, so like the brown, the gray, the blue, and the, or the yellow mats. That's, I think like they want to know what's that, what, just to be safe. So when we come, uh, first thing first for our, our, our viewers at home, sometimes the colors can be a little bit deceptive. So keep that in mind as you watch, because you'll notice that depending on where the vehicle is, you might see the colors change. That said, there really are a good number of colors down here. The um, dirt looking stuff is, is typically dirt from a distance, but when you get closer, you start to see a lot of tube dwelling organisms and uh, actually quite a diversity of life that lives in the, uh, in the sediments. Um, the white and orange uh, colored areas are covered by microbial mat. Um, surprisingly, uh, sometimes they are a big diversity of different microbes, and in other cases, sometimes the orange and white uh, microbes are actually very closely related or the same microbe. Um, the orange coloration comes from a pigment, and there's a lot of discussion about what the pigment might actually be doing. The blue that Lisa, um, one of the lead scientists on board, uh, was referring to are, are the ciliates, which means that they're very, very small uh, relatives of animals, and they have this blue pigmentation uh, and form these kind of, um, kind of blue, really br brightly colored blue mats. What's really cool about them is that they not only occur at these seeps, but we see them at hydrothermal vents uh, up <laughs> off the coast of Washington and Canada. That covers most of the colors. Um, if you see something that looks like a white rock, it's probably carbonate, uh, which uh, means it's kind of like chalk, oh, yeah. and it's formed by microbes that are very active in these methane-rich environments. Thanks, Pete. That's great. Yeah, that was perfect. What, what looks green is really brown sediment. And oh, really? So it's okay. unclear how blue, whether the blue here is all folliculinids, but, but it might be. So this... These tube cores, we've had requests for samples for myofauna, for environmental sequencing, for isotopes, for peat wants them for something. I'm not sure exactly what. Yeah, hopefully it'll all stay in. It should. It should, like a good little push core. No. 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 It's uh, falling out. It's falling out. Gravity takes over. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Okay, Ooh. that's a oh, nice. Nice. Uh, break. Uh, All right. Wow. Mm. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and, and acquire that. And if you can hold it above the milk crate and just let it clear for a second, we can make a decision on what next. So it's looking, if you can see from the lasers that are 10 centimeters apart, uh, it looks like uh, we have almost sort of a C shaped or crescent shaped. Uh, sample of carbonate here. Um, Herc, I have no idea how well you can grab things out of your milk crate. If you can think of a way to get it in there and try and break a, a smaller piece off, that might be our best chance. Yeah, I think we could do that. Very well. Indulge yourself. All right. <laughs> nice job, buddy. Yeah, nice job indeed. Oh, oh yeah. way to oh. break it off. Okay, good. <laughs> there you go. I did it all in one shot. That, yeah, the, the, yeah. It, so the, Her the Herc pilots are really renowned for the ability for one-stop shopping, so it looks like we have a, <laughs> we've so got, we've a, got a, a sub-sample. We've, we've got a big big piece that's right in between the toolbox and that. Yeah, yeah that's sorry. right. Sorry about that. Uh, so these hairy filaments, so what are they me. filter feeding? Are they grabbing water with um, it, It's a good question. So when we see... Um, these filamentous things, there's a, a few possibilities. One is that they're just forming long filaments and um, basking in the sulfide or methane-rich fluid and uh, making a living off that. Some organisms use filaments to capture particles from the water. Other organisms use filaments to absorb nutrients from the water. Uh, and if you're a bacteria and really, really small, there's something to be said for forming uh, filaments so that you can position um, 
so that the, the, the assemblage of cells can position themselves better in the water. All right, so these are kind of it. colonies of bacteria. It's very likely we now. We've been camp. talking about um, oh, ciliates, which are not bacteria. They're actually we're eukaryotes. Against. That means that their cells have yeah, nuclei wow. just like yours and mine. Right on the edge of but that. But they're um, generally single cell, solitary um, eukaryotes, or they Ooh. form little colonies. Barely got it now. One of the challenges Broadway. of collecting really delicate what? things off the oh. seafloor is that when you recover the ROV and you're on the sea surface, it's bouncing around a little bit, and it's like a washing machine and tends to scrub a lot of the finer features uh, like mm. these little ciliates off of the uh, rocks. Mussels do well, you know, clams do well. Because um, they have real glue that will stick yeah. to the rock yeah, Or better. they close their valves, right? Okay. Um, the other thing to consider, though, is the temperature changes on the way to the surface. And a lot of these organisms don't do well if the temperature goes up even just a few degrees. Look at this dexterity. Very nicely yeah. done. Yeah.